Hey everybody, we're back here at the 3KG North Roaster at Mill City Campus. I'm gonna get ready to roast that lovely Ethiopian that we've been talking about. We're gonna go for about a 375 charge. I've been warming up the machine for about 15 minutes, so I kinda know where I'm at with that. We're doing a 2KG batch size, so we're gonna go for about 11 minutes to about 408. I really wanna do a nice light roast of this coffee. We're gonna accentuate the berry fruit notes in the cup, but also develop the body and sweetness and really kind of keep that nice bright tart acidity that'll add balance to this cup. All right, well I think the machine's about ready for the temp that we wanna charge it at, so let's get going. Okay, now we got the roast going. I tend to leave the airflow a little low to start, so I'm gonna leave the airflow nice and low. We'll let it kind of turn. With the 3kg, I let the machine turn, actually, and add all its energy into the coffee before I hit it with fuel. So now, right now, it's just kind of a waiting game to watch that coffee absorb the energy, turn, and then we'll start hitting it with some fuel. So yeah, if you guys are using data logging software and you track your profiles on Artisan or something else like that, one of the other data logging packages, we do have online profiles for our coffees. So if you want a little head start, you want to have an understanding of what we do here at Mill City with these coffees, just check on our website, look at our Artisan profiles, download them, and try and break them down. And if you have any questions, just hit, hit us up on an email or give us a phone call. We can figure that out for you. All right, I think we're about ready to turn. It's looking like... This machine tends to turn around a minute 30. So we're at a minute 26. I think we're turning right now, so I'm gonna hit it with fuel. I roughly am gonna hit it with about 45% of overall max fuel on this machine. All right, so now I've hit it with fuel. All right guys, so now I can see my ET temperature line actually increasing quite a bit. You know, that's one thing you'll notice is once you add your fuel, you're gonna see your ET line get, get up there quite a bit. At drop, a charge, I should say, the bean temp and the ET were pretty close. Now we're seeing them deviate quite a bit as I add fuel. And you see the top of that drum heat up. So now we're gonna start looking for our peak ROR. I wanna hit my peak ROR sometime during the drying phase, towards the end of the drying phase, I'm gonna say. So I'll probably end up bringing down the fuel maybe before the end of the drying phase, just so I don't carry too much energy into the Maillard phase. I really wanna extend the Maillard phase and get that development. But with the natural coffees, a lot of times you'll run into a little bit lack of uh, roast development at the end of the roast because these natural coffees tend to roast quickly and they tend to take on energy really well and they brown up quite fast. And they kind of look a little darker than they would a wash coffee. And so I really want to bring down the energy. I really want to have a lot of control approaching first crack with a natural. A little bit more control, you know. And you got the naturals, the key to a really successful natural roast is just having full control as you approach first crack. Okay, now we're hitting, through, we're hitting through the dry phase. You can see the coffee is transitioning just ever so slightly. It looks like it's a little bit just like, like not when you say bright green yet, it's just looking like it's a little like lighter shade of green. You know, some coffees they transition a little differently. Naturals tend to start out a little yellow, so you're not gonna see the abrupt green to yellow transition as you would with a wash coffee, but we will see the yellow to kind of orange transition or the brightening of the green, and then a kind of yellowing of the green. And I think right now, it's just starting to get bright. We have about a 277 temp on the bean probe. I tend to stick with the bean probe as my like kind of um, the, 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 the probe that I, that I hang my hat on, the one that I really think about, the one that I use to make my decisions. I use the lower bean probe. That's, that's just the way I choose to roast. All right, so we're approaching 290. We've actually come off our ROR, which is what I was hoping would happen before I'd have to bring the fuel down myself. You know what I mean? So we, we peaked out our ROR at like 42 ROR, and that was roughly at about two and a half minutes. We're now at the four minute mark, and we're at 36 ROR, and the ROR came down by about six ROR, but we're starting to get to a place where it's planning off and it's gonna hold the ROR a little bit, and that's the point where I'll probably have to bring the fuel down. Uh, 425 at time, and we're getting really close to yellow transition. So I'm gonna start using the trier here and looking at the coffee. Okay, I definitely see about 40% of it transitioning to yellow, 50% roughly. There's still a little grass there. It's kind of really, really nesting in the hay place. I'm gonna wait for it just to get a little sweeter, a little bit more bread kind of out of it. And then we'll call end of uh, dry. And at that point, I'll actually increase the airflow too. I bring the airflow up by about 25% at that point. 
All right, I think we're looking really good. Yep, 321, five minutes. I'm gonna call that dry end. I'm gonna record that over here on my data logging package. So now we're down to 30 ROR. I think like I could be a little uh, worried about that. Maybe it's a little low just entering into my yard, but I know this coffee pretty well. I wanna get good development of my yard, so I'm gonna let it ride. You know, I was initially talking about bringing my fuel down. I didn't bring my fuel down because my ROR came down naturally on its own. And that could be because it's the first batch of the day. When you watch your first batch of the day, you're gonna notice the thermal energy in your machine is gonna be a little bit off. So I also just increased my airflow really quickly there by about 25%. I'm gonna go back to the trier and see where we're at. Oh yeah, we're fully through the transition. We got some like orangish colors, I should say. It's not really orange, that's just what I say. Oh yeah, now we're starting to get some like some really subtle caramelized notes. There's also some floral notes kind of in there. Lots of different kind of bready qualities. Maybe even like a little yeastiness going on. Grains, corn, things like that. Smelling kind of sweet, sweet grain, I should say. Six minutes, we're at 350. So this is the point where you really want to start thinking about control for first crack. So right now I'm at 26 ROR. I want to slow that down. So I'm bringing my fuel down. I'm bringing my fuel down by 50%. So I just did a 50% decrease of my overall fuel for this roast. So I really want that ROR to drop down again. I will do another airflow adjustment right around first crack, bring it up again by about another 25%. And, then I, and at that point I might bring the fuel down another notch, but I don't want to lose all my energy. That's one of the mistakes you can make as a roaster is that you'll just bring the fuel down too quickly as you approach your final temperature or the, the final development phase of your roast. Thus you'll lose all your energy and you'll tank your roast. And then if you apply energy again for a light roast, you could create some like, I should say some not so great cup quality. So you just gotta really control that rate of rise decline. With a light, it's really important. So my rate of rise is roughly at 22 now. I was at 26 when I made my fuel adjustment, so it's still coming down. Looks like the line is coming down aggressively too, which is kind of what I want. As I approach crack, which we're getting really close to crack, I wanna be below 20 in my ROR. I'm a little bit worried right now on this roast, but I'm gonna let it ride. Ooh, now we're getting some really nice caramelized sugar notes. I smell a little, there's ever so subtle, like sweet fruit kind of quality going on. I haven't heard any part of the crack yet, so we're still pre-crack. My ROR is 19, so it's looking really solid, but I still think I'm a little bit too fast into this, so I'm gonna bring my fuel down by a, one more little small smidgen. So now I got my fuel down just a smidge. We're, we're getting close to crack. I've heard a few outliers. Okay, now we're getting some caramelized notes. Oh yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear that crack, but I can get the microphone in there. There we go, we're gonna call that crack right there. So I'm gonna record my first crack. I like to think about crack as being three, three concise pops. Whatever it is you use for your first crack um, identifier, just keep it consistent across the board. T there tends to be some outliers in any coffee, specifically natural, so I would say don't use your first pop. That can really confuse you. And then you'll get really long development times and you'll wonder why your coffee's tasting a little weird. It's probably because you're calling your crack out a little early. Now I'm right on the trier. I'm getting some spice, some cocoa, lots of different notes. I can even look at my airflow. I need to bring my airflow up another little smidge. So I'm bringing up my airflow again. One more airflow adjustments. Now I can hear crack. It's in a full roll, I should say. You guys can hear that? Oh yeah, that's a rolling crack. I'd say that's a medium crack. It's really nice. So right now we're at 850 and we're roughly at 402. Our ROR is at 14, so it's still a little high, but it's coming down and it's coming down quite a bit. And we want to go about seven to eight more degrees in about two minutes. So I think we're on track. We could end up with this roast a little, a little shorter than our overall goal, but you know that we don't know that's really wrong until we're on the cupping table. My gut tells me anywhere between 10 and 12 minutes for a light roast of this coffee is going to be good. So. It's more about maintaining control than it is about making like snap judgments in the midst of your roast that could throw the roast off. Consistency is always best when it comes to roasting. All right, now I'm getting some cocoa. Ooh, right there I got a little fruit. So it's getting a little fruity. We still have a pretty high ROR, so I'm gonna kill the fuel. We're actually approaching 410 right now. So I'm gonna make the decision right in the trier. We're, we're definitely at the, the roast level I want. We still have a little, a little uh, smoothing that we can use on this coffee. There's still some ridges on the coffee. So I think I'm gonna go a little farther. I'm gonna go to 412. We're roughly around 412. I'm gonna let the coffee just progress a little bit more time. I'm getting ready to, to drop this coffee out in the next 10 seconds, I'm thinking. All right, I'm gonna turn on my cooling stirs and my fan. 
10 minutes, 412. All right, so now I had 10, we roughly hit exactly 10 minutes at 412.03 or 412.3. So with this roast, I had a 51% of my overall phases, or drying phase of 51%. I roughly had a 29% uh, Maillard phase and a 20% development phase, which I wasn't paying attention to my development percentage. I was purely looking at the smoothing of the bean before I dropped this one. So that was just kind of like luck of the, luck of the, experienced roaster, I guess, to nail that 20% development without really putting a lot of, uh, paying a lot of attention to it, you know? 20% is a good number though, a good place to kind of like start with as far as your overall development percentage goes for roasting. It's, it's a really solid, healthy place. And then from there you can deviate and that'll help you understand your own cup and your own style of roasting. All right, hey everybody. So excuse the cooling tray noise, but I'm still cooling that light roast batch. We're gonna let it out of the cooling tray here in about a minute or so. But while we have the roaster ready to go, we're gonna jump right into that second roast. So with our second roast, we really wanna get a little bit more development on this coffee. And I don't mean development, just development phase. I mean overall development. We're gonna take it medium. So the first roast is a nice classic light roast. This one we're gonna go with a medium roast. I'm gonna definitely push it out beyond 12 minutes. I'm gonna probably drop it around 418, 420 we'll say. And really what I'm trying to do is I'm really trying to accentuate some of the chocolate, cocoa and spice notes in this cup. I'm really gonna side on the side of body with this cup. I'm gonna definitely uh, tamp down the acidity. The acidity won't be as, so much in the front. It'll probably be on the back as like a finishing quality. I want the sweetness and body to really be at the forefront of this cup. I wanna develop the flavor so I get a really nice balance between fruit and kind of chocolate and spice. And so it's gonna be a really balanced, complex cup, but in a weird way, a little bit more approachable maybe than the light roast because it'll be a little bit easier to add sugar, add milk. It'll be a little easier for the average coffee consumer to drink it and not be thrown off by the really bright fruit notes and the high acidity. So we're pretty much down to our charge temp. So I'm doing the same charge. I'm gonna do a 360 charge temp. I'm gonna do a two kilogram charge batch. And we're basically gonna try and bang it out, like I said, 12 to 14 minutes. We'll probably go 418. All right, let's get going. All right, that worked out perfect. So 360 we had on the charge. I went with just a little bit lower charge temp because we're into our second batch. So as time goes on throughout the day, you'll realize that your machine gets hotter and hotter and hotter, and you might need to lower some of your temperatures and some of your fuel inputs as you go. So from first batch to second batch, that's definitely gonna have a little bit of a transition. I'm gonna get the stirs back on for a second just to stir the coffee, and we're almost ready to drop this, uh, the light roast out of the tray. So that, that, that sound will be gone in a second. I apologize. But cooling the coffee is very important. All right, so now we see our ET temp, like I said in the last roast, is pretty low. It, you know, it's a little bit higher than the bean temp, but it's overall low ET. It's out of the fuel on, you know. I'm letting the beans really absorb a lot of energy from the, the drum. I'm not hitting, with, hitting them with hard fuel right now. The 3kg North Roaster has plenty of fuel to do whatever I need to do with the roast, so I don't need to hit it with hard fuel right after charge because I'm afraid that my ROR won't get to where it needs to go. I can relax a little bit, I can let this coffee take on the energy that the drum has, and then I'll hit it with energy when I need to, to bring up that ROR where I want. All right, so we're looking at, we're about a minute 13. This the machine turns around a minute 30, so we have about 15, 20 seconds. During that time, I think I'm gonna try and get this coffee out of the tray. So I just hit it with a little fuel. I, I hit it with about 45% of the overall fuel this machine capacity has. And that was roughly at about 140 some in time. And I think I was right around 185 of temperature. So I'm gonna finish letting this coffee out of the tray. All right, tray's empty. You want to get the coffee out of the cooling tray as soon as possible. For one thing, you don't want you don't want to like let your your coffee get reheated up in the tray, like you know, in case the machine gets hot or the air is hot. But also, you don't want to overly basically stale your coffee by running air over your coffee in the cooling tray. You're basically just expediting the staling process. So as soon as the coffee is cool, you just want to get your coffee out of the tray and into a bag.
All right, so this roast, I'm just gonna basically extend the overall roast. It's, it, it sounds really simple, I guess, in a way. The, the hard part is actually doing it on your machine. But what I'm really trying to do is I'm just trying to add 20% across all the phases, you know? I just wanna extend the overall drying, I wanna extend the overall Maillard, and I'm probably gonna keep the overall development percentage about the same. The time will probably be extended a little bit, but I'm gonna keep the percentage the same. And roughly I'm just trying to extend the overall roast time and take the roast darker, you know? So that's all I'm really trying to do. So if my first profile went really well, I really like that cup, I'm gonna say that if I just extended all the phases by about 20%, you know, and about 20% darker, you, you probably get a nice medium cup with a really similar profile. The fine adjustments you need to make down the road to get that cup perfect, that's not gonna happen with your first roast, but you're gonna be in the ballpark and you're gonna get a good idea of what that coffee has. Okay, this is great. So at this, at this level, we just peaked out at a 39 ROR. The last roast, I think we had a 44 ROR. So now we're actually five ROR behind at our peak, which is great, because that's just gonna slow this roast down. And that's gonna give us the proper amount of time we want for this roast. So you can think about it that way. You can think about it in, time, in, in, in context of time, or you can think about it in the context of your ROR. If you slow your ROR down, or if you have a lower ROR by about 15 to 20%, that'll make your roast roughly 15 to 20% longer at the same exact roast level. So that's one way to think about it. All right, we're roughly at 420, 290. You can see the coffee is starting to get that lightish color. You know, it's not really uh, transitioning yet, but it's starting to get brighter. Oh yeah, definitely. There's a lot of green pepper right there. Really like green notes. As the first bits of like moisture kind of starts to get cooked out of the coffee. It's quite vegetal. There's some sweetness though coming on and that's when you kind of start to know that you're transitioning. Once you start getting those little bit of notes of sweetness. So we're at 305, 450. Our ROR has come down quite a bit. We're at 31 ROR. I'm, I think I'm good with that. I, 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 I kind of want to like add a little bit of fuel right now to make sure it doesn't tank, but I'm going to trust that we're going to catch up a little bit and then we're going to get to a, kind of an equilibrium somewhere in the Maillard phase. And that just might be my experience talking or I could just be wrong. Okay, we're getting really close. Ooh, there's some nice kind of, really kind of sweet green notes right there. I don't know what you'd call that. Sweet pea maybe. Mm, yeah, now we're getting into the bread. Okay, we're gonna call it. So we just call it dry end roughly. We had about a, we had a pretty long, it was about a five minute, 20 second uh, drying phase. So we're definitely extending out the time on this one. So that's great, that's what we're looking for. Our RRR is already down to 27, but it is planing off by a little bit, holding that kind of line of 27. So I'm bringing up the airflow. What bringing up the airflow at this early stage of the roast will do is it'll bring the roast uh, ROR down. So it's basically gonna start to strip away some of the energy in the machine and actually cool the roast down slightly. bit. I mean, it's not truly cooling the roast down, just slowing the roast down. So if I was at 27 ROR when I increased airflow with the same fuel setting, I'm already down to 26 and it was about 10 seconds. Within a minute, I'll probably be down to about 20, roughly. So that, in, that, in that way, it's like a subtler adjustment of your ROR than a fuel adjustment. If I adjusted my fuel, I think I would get a much more abrupt, dramatic lessening of the ROR. And on top of that, as your roast progresses, you're filling the roast chamber up with much more smoke, which can then impregnate the beans and give your overall cup a little bit of a roast taste. So it's always a good idea to like slightly increase your airflow as you progress the roast, especially if you're going dark, because you don't want all that dark roasty smoke in your drum getting on your beans, unless you're going for a really smoky roast, which that's, that's a whole other story I should say. All right, so 357, so we're at 357, 650. I'm gonna actually lower the fuel right now. I'm lowering the fuel by quite a bit. I lowered the fuel by about 70% right there. So I'm down to like really low fuel. And what I'm really trying to do is just drag out this roast a little bit. I don't want it to progress too fast through the end of my yard, and I don't want it to hit into first crack with too much momentum. We're at seven minutes, 365. So hopefully that's gonna have a nice effect on our roast and extend it right now. We're at 22 ROR, so our ROR is a little bit fast, to be really honest. If we hit crack and we're at about 20 ROR, we're gonna have to really drag out the development uh, phase to really get the proper roast level and overall development on this coffee. Which, you never really know what's gonna be the like perfect solution for every green coffee. So you have to kind of be willing to let the coffee do what it does. Like I, have a, I think about sometimes like coffee is two ways, forcing the coffee to do what you want and letting the coffee do what it wants. And, and you never know which cup is gonna be the best. Sometimes the coffee just wants to do what it wants to do. 
And now our ROR is dropping off quite a bit. So now we're doing a 17 ROR, that's great. We're not even in the first crack yet. A lot of times I'm hesitant to use a trier a lot right around cracks. I don't want to like cool the thermocouple down. The thermocouples are hanging out right around your trier. So just be aware of that. If you're doing a lot of trier action, you might notice your temperature drop and that actually isn't the beans or the actual roasting environment. It's actually just the trier, opening it up and letting a little bit of cool air hit that thermocouple. All right, we got some nice caramelized notes. We're definitely getting into like the, the sugar browning. Some dried fruit going on in there. Maybe a little prune, maybe a little raisin. Yeah, we definitely have some, uh, maybe we could go as far as saying bread pudding. Or maybe I'm just hungry. Yum. Okay, 386, wow. So our slower roast has actually extended out our first crack time too. So we're at a 13 ROR right now. We're roughly at 847. I think we're just getting into crack. Oh, it's still not cracking. We get a really, we get, we're dragging our crack out quite a bit here. Oop, I think that's it. Yep, there we go. So that's crack right there. That was 391 at nine minutes. So definitely we extended that out. Like we went, we went a good amount of degrees darker or degrees farther before we heard that crack. And that's what you'll learn. You'll learn that like when you hit coffee really hard and aggressive, you'll get that crack a little earlier. When you tend to like be gentle and smooth and slow, you'll tend to get your crack a little bit later. And that's just not time, I mean temperature. If that sounds a little confusing. Okay, now we're just trying to maintain control. We're at a 12 ROR, that's great actually. And it's holding that line because we want to extend this development phase quite a bit. We're at 398, we want to go to about 418. So we, get, we have about 20 degrees to go. We're at 940, we could go anywhere between 12 and 14 minutes. So we're looking like we're right in, like we, our target's within reach right now. We have enough control. We're, I'm seeing some smoothing. Yep, so I'm saying we're approaching our last roast, roast level and then we let the last coffee out at around 409. So I'm starting to see that smoothing happening. We kind of have, a, all naturals have a little mottled look. So you just have to understand that like a bean might look a little lighter than another bean in there. So always, I always go with the darker the beans or whatever the highest percentage of beans is. You know, like you'll get some modeling, you can look and see. There's a little bit of variance between the darkest beans and the lightest beans. So just understand when you're doing your trier, you might see a little variance there and just to kind of look at the lighter beans. All right, we're still looking really good. Our ROR is coming down. We're at nine ROR. That could be a little risky, but then again, we only, we're at 408, so we only have about nine degrees to go. So we're you know, looking, and we're looking like we could do that in two minutes. Two minutes would be great. If we could get to 12 and a half minutes, which we're at 10 and a half right now, that'd be perfect. Our ROR is still coming down, so we're about eight. I'm gonna bring the airflow up by just the smallest fraction because I just don't want any of the smoky notes that are that's coming off the roast now. There's much more smoke in the roast chamber to get on those beans. But the same token, I don't want to bring the airflow up too much because I don't want to lose my fuel or lose my, uh, my energy in this batch. We're, we're really kind of at like a really fine line right now between having too much energy and running my rate of rise up and then maybe creating some negative cup quality or bringing my energy down too far and tanking this roast and not being able to get to the time and development that I want. Okay, we're, we're approaching 4.15 at 11.20. We're looking really good. We're at eight ROR. We've already broken through our 20% development phase. So 20%, we're on the number right now. This is medium, so we're probably going like 25%. You know, I think that's good. I think that's really solid. It's a solid amount. Like I said before, we really are siding on the side of body and sweetness, which that's gonna come from more development. More development time, more development percentage. Okay, now we're at 11.40, 4.18, so we're right at that number. I'm killing the fuel. So I just turn the fuel off. I'm gonna let the machine just run with, with the energy it's got. Let the beans just kind of take on some energy. I'm gonna leave the airflow where it's at. Now I'm just looking, actually I'm gonna increase the airflow by just another little smidge. So I also don't want that cup quality, like a negative cup quality from the smoke, but I also wanna bring the ROR down basically to a place where I can let this coffee out. You can let the coffee out at any ROR. I just like to kind of use the energy and kind of let the coffee develop a little more. Now we're at 420. I'm gonna actually go into the trier now and we're gonna use the trier to decide we let this out. Okay, I think we're looking really good. We're smoothing. Our ROI is dropping off. We're at 26%. All right, so this coffee is going to come out. So we're roughly looking at 1220 to 420 for this overall roast. This is probably going to be a little bit on the, I don't know, I guess maybe a little more on the medium, medium side. This is maybe going to be a true medium, medium, or uh, maybe some people call it a Vienna roast. All right, now I'm cooling this batch and we're gonna get ready for the next batch. 
All right, hey everybody, so we're back at the 3kg roaster. We got this Ethiopian and we're gonna go dark on this coffee. We're gonna go dark in this coffee so that we can make it probably approachable to most coffee drinkers. Specifically in your market, the majority of your coffee consumers are into more dark coffee. They're not gonna really enjoy the intense fruity berry qualities and the acidity of a light roast of this coffee. So we're gonna take it a little farther. We still are gonna keep the great quality of this cup. This Ethiopian has a lot of body, a lot of sweetness. That's gonna be in the overall cup. We're just gonna change the overall flavor profile flavor profile to much more about chocolate and cocoa and spice and then that'll be a really big home run for all your normal coffee drinkers so all right guys let's get going on this coffee and let's get it going okay so I actually charged this coffee a little bit lower we went to about a 350 charge. So the first roast I did a 360 charge, second roast I did a 370 charge, the third roast I did a 350 charge. That could sound a little wacky to everybody and it's kind of like I'm just doing whatever I want to do. That's not the case. I actually, I'm trying to extend this roast. So we're going for an overall longer roast time and a little bit longer development percentage. So I'm gonna lower my charge temp and then that's gonna give me a little bit like a greater gradient to work from. So my turning point will be lower now my finish point is going to be higher and that's going to give me an overall longer amount of, of gradient to roast with. That gives me a little bit more control. Basically it makes it so I can easily extend my roast time without having to aggressively lower the fuel inputs and have maybe a, a, having some kind of like negative cup quality based on my rate of rise or the way I'm adding my fuel. I'm going to do the same as I have with all three of these roasts. I've been waiting till around turning point to add my fuel. So I'm leaving, so the fuel is off right now. I don't have the fuel on. The machine has a lot of thermal energy. The green being a natural takes on heat really well, but also shows color, roast color, a little bit darker than most coffees because there's so much sugar in the exterior of the bean. So I don't want to hit it too hard with uh, energy and potentially char, burn, or tip the exterior of these beans as there's a lot of sugar and it's really easy to do that. So you got to watch the amount of heat input in the beginning of a roast of a natural and your airflow throughout the roast. It's a little bit easier to tip a natural. You know, add too much heat, add too much energy, burn those little tips of the beans that are so delicate. All right, so now we're at a minute 40, 190, and I just turned on the fuel. So the past roast, I've been using a four, I shouldn't say four, past roast, I've been using about a 45% of max fuel. This roast, I'm gonna go to 40. So I'm just gonna lower my fuel input in the beginning by a little bit. And what I'm trying to do with that is just overall lessen my ROR. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably hit, on this coffee, I'm going to probably hit a peak ROR around 35. I'm actually going to try and maintain that ROR a little longer. So I'm not going to have the big peak and then drop off that I'd have with a light roast with an r, &R. I'm going to actually try and hit a lower, hit a, a like shorter peak. And then from that point, I'm going to try and hold the plateau a little bit. I'm gonna try and hold that plateau, extend out the drying phase, but not have it be too long, and then carry that right into Maillard, extend the Maillard phase. The development phase will probably go at the same as the last roast, 25 to 26%. But just understand too, that if you're always going for your declining rate of rise post drying phase, you're not gonna be able to hit the roast level you want for a dark roast. So my rate of rise isn't gonna be a nice decrescendo line like I'm used to with the light and with even lighter mediums. We're gonna, it's gonna get a little wonky and there might be a part of my rate of rise line that actually holds temp and there might even be a little slight uptick spike in the rate of rise. And that really is just trying to get that coffee where it needs to go for roast development. And that's something that's gonna have to happen when you're doing a dark roast. So don't be too caught up on your rate of rise line not coming down consistently. If it spikes up a little bit post first crack, right around second, that's normal. And really, it's all about the cup too. So let the decision be in the cup. You know, don't make a decision on your machine by looking at your data logging software based on a curve that doesn't look the way it should look. That, that, that's not 100% accurate. So really let your coffee do the talking on the table. All right, so we're, we just hit our peak ROR, which is 35. So it looks like I'm, uh, I'm, re I'm really on track. I have a lower fuel input. So I can start looking at my greens now, taking some trier shots. Oh yeah, we're definitely slowing this one down. We're at about four minutes and we're at 253. So we're, we're definitely about a minute, minute and a half behind where our last roast was. But this overall roast is gonna go about three to four minutes longer. So we're, we're doing good, at least two minutes longer, I should say. Oh yeah, there's some really sweet fruity notes right there. Wow, that was really nice. 
And you might pick up some, when you deviate your roast profiles like this, one thing you're gonna pick up is like certain little wins that you didn't realize were there. You know, like I'm realizing right now at this lower rate of rise in the drying phase that maybe I've been hitting the coffee with a little bit too much fuel in my light roasts, and thus I've been maybe creating like some negative cup quality and also shortening my drying phase by a little bit. You know, like there was a really sweet fruity smell I got right there that I haven't smelled yet in my roasts. So that, that just gives me a little, little food for thought. Think about that. Really look at the cupping table and maybe I need to adjust my light roasts based on the way that this dark roast is roasting. So sometimes you, you learn things about your coffee and your roasting, you know, that you, you weren't planning on learning. So now we're approaching more of the classic start and beginning of yellow. Okay, yeah, I'm still getting those fruit notes. Wow, it's, it actually smells a lot like plums. I'm getting a really plummy, strong, like, I, I almost wanna say fresh plum kind of in there. Okay, now we're going more into grass. That was weird, that was like a, like a green, almost like a green fruit of some sort. I don't even know what that would be, not like an apple. God, it was weird, it was almost like a green gummy or something. All right, so now we're at about five and a half minutes and we're hitting 300. So we're still not there to end of dry. So we're definitely extending our roast across. We're now at about a 25 ROR. So we're down quite a bit. Normally in the drying phase, I would never be below like 35. You know, hit a peak of 45, start coming down into the, the mid 30s and then go into my yard. So we're still dry and we're roughly holding about a 24 ROR. So we're, we're coming down a little bit, but I'm not gonna lower the fuel in this roast like I did in the past roast. I started out with a lower fuel setting and I'm gonna hold that much longer through the roast. So you're gonna see somewhere in the my, end of my yard phase, you're gonna see the ROR really start to hold a line and I'm gonna let it stay there. And I'm gonna ride that through first crack. So this roast profile is gonna look a lot different on the, the, the data logging software on the Artisan screen than the other two. And that's really because I'm trying to accomplish something quite different. And it also kind of says too that roasting isn't just an additional thing. You know, when you're going from light to medium, you add like a certain percentage. When you're going from medium to dark, you add a certain percentage, but that's not the answer. It's not 100% like that. It's a little bit like extraction. Like you don't just up your quantity of grounds when you're, when you're producing a more higher volume of liquid. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's kind of like, there's some science to be applied there. So that's really what we're thinking about here. So it's not all black and white and it's not all apples to apples. All right, now we're starting to get some really nice browning notes. I'm gonna call that dry end. I think we went a little long and I probably should have called dry end about six, seven degrees earlier, but that's okay. All right, our ROR is looking good. We're at a 20 ROR and like I thought, we're holding that ROR line really well. We're just hanging out right at 20. I just upped my airflow by just a little bit, my 20%, 25% increase that I usually do around dry end. So that will bring the ROR down a little bit, but as I look, I see the ROR line looks like it was already to increase slightly. So that's great that I brought the air up a little bit. That'll, that'll hold that line. So I'm really trying to hold my 20 ROR line somewhere through, right at this point, probably through first crack, which is really different than the last roast, right? I've been bringing it down to single digit, or not single digits, but like teens as I approach first crack. I was talking a lot about control, really controlling the rate of rise into first crack. Now I'm kind of going back on my word. I'm saying, hey, I'm actually trying to keep my rate of rise quite high in the first crack because we're going to go into second. So we want to keep that momentum going to go into second, uh, second crack. I recently got a question from a roaster, one of, our, one, of our, one of the people that work on our machines, about why they weren't getting a dark roast. They've been really trying to develop a coffee to be a dark roast, and they've been getting a lot of light roasts. And so they were just asking me, like, what's the trick to getting a good dark roast? Really, the trick is, is just applying energy throughout the roast. There's so much information out there in the internet and the world of roasting about really good light roasting, but there's not a lot of information about really good dark roasting. So I think the biggest trick, secret in dark roasting is just applying energy throughout your roast and not pulling back on the energy input around first crack because you really wanna carry that momentum through first crack. You have to, because if you don't, then you're gonna lose your roast, right? And that's what happens. That's why when you let your roast out, it's a light roast in the tray, even though your goal was a dark roast. So hit it with more energy. Don't be afraid to push that rate of rise line back up too. You know, if your coffee is so light you can't drink it, then it doesn't really have any place in your lineup. So be willing to take a risk on the machine to get your cup where you need to be to sell your coffee, and then after the fact, you can reconcile how you got there. Change your processes so you get a better cup, a sweeter cup, but don't let the coffee out of the roaster if it's not at a roast level where you can use that coffee. All right, now we're approaching crack. We're around nine minutes. 
Our RO line is holding 18, so we're right in that good place. I think we're right. I'm not going to make another a fuel adjustment. Just like I said, I'm going to hold it. Around first crack, I might make another airflow adjustment. I will bring the airflow up again, just because I don't want any of the smoky notes to get on this coffee. As this coffee being a really nice Ethiopian, it's got a lot of quality on it. I don't want it to be a super smoky, roasty cup. I want to develop this coffee. I want it to be a darker roast, but I don't want it to smell like smoke. I don't want there to be roast. I don't want there to be smoke on this coffee. All right, I think we're approaching crack. I'm hearing some popping going on. Oh yeah, we're gonna call that crack right there. So we got first crack. We roughly at about 391, 950, so really close to where we were the last roast. I just brought the airflow up again. I also did lower my fuel, but I only lowered it by about 20%. So I did, a, in the past I've been doing large fuel adjustments, like 40 to 50% adjustments right around crack. This one I just did a 20% adjustment. I don't wanna let this coffee run away from me. Like I said, naturals can run away from you. They can have too much energy going into crack, but I also don't want it to tank. So I'm just really trying to hold that line. That's where dark roasting is challenging. You know, honestly, as a roaster, I feel like a quality dark roast, the kind of dark roast we're trying to achieve right now might be the hardest roast to do. You know, it's, it's really hard because you're having to like kind of reinvent the wheel a little bit and think outside the box. You can't just use your declining rate of rise. You can't just lose the same energy inputs as you do when you go into first crack. We're going quite a bit farther. We want to go into second. So we have to kind of think about things in a little different context. All right. My rate of rise line is holding really well. I had a slight bump right around first crack. So I brought the airflow up, like I said, and I brought the fuel down just a little bit, but we're holding a 17 rate of rise line right now. We're roughly at 411 at 11 minutes. So this roast is doing really well. We're, we're looking at work. We're easily going to get 12 minutes out of it. 430 is definitely within our realm. You know, our rate of rise is coming down to 14 right now, but that's, that's pretty much right where we want to be right now. You know, I can hear first crack. Let's get back in there and listen to that first crack. I'd call that a pretty fast crack. So I'd say we're probably halfway through crack, if not a little more, and it's cracking pretty fast. So we have a good, good process going. Our development of this coffee is going really well. Let's get back on that trier and see where we're at. Oh yeah, we're definitely getting some caramelized sugar, some cocoa, roasted almonds maybe. Now we're through 421, 11.40. We still have a 12 rate of rise. So we're looking super great. This is, this is looking great. Oh yeah, now we're getting some really nice caramelized sugar notes. Some butter caramel. All right there, kind of, there's kind of maybe a little bit of creme brulee. I kind of get like butter and cream mixed with sugar in a way. I think we're getting really close, 427. So 427, I just had a little spike of uh, ROR. I'm actually turning up the fuel. So we're at 12 minutes and 10 seconds, 428. I'm gonna bring up the air by another slight little smidge, and I'm just gonna go to the trier. And that's gonna decide when I let this coffee out. I'm really going for a little bit of chocolate in the trier. Oh yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Yep, it's kind of more milk chocolatey, I wanna say. Oh, that's nice. There's a really nice kind of like a uh, brownie note going. So I'm gonna turn on my cooling tray. All right, we're gonna go 1235 to 434. That was a finish on that one. I think we did really well on that one. 